Thank you so much, uh, Rosemary. Um, thanks for uh, allowing us to present here. I'm Dr. Doug Perednia uh, with The Curious Incorporated, and we're harnessing the power of positive psychology to move people away from screens and into challenging real life activities. What we're doing is building an online marketplace for real life goal oriented challenges. A goal oriented challenge is an activity which has a fixed mission or goal that's neither too easy nor too difficult for the skill set of the person undertaking it. If it's too easy, they get bored. If it's too difficult, they become frustrated. But if it's just right, then it's a, it's a very pleasurable experience. And when they accomplish the challenge, there's a great feeling of achievement. Our product is specifically designed to periodically lure people away from screens and into real life activities that'll give them a sense of autonomy, achievement, and relatedness. And what we do basically is we're building an online platform that connects challenge seekers with challenge providers. It's a, it's a, a B2B, B2C kind of operation and a comprehensive marketplace where everybody can find something to do uh, that would be interesting and somewhere to do it. The problem that we're really addressing here is that all of us are spending way too much time on screens. Nearly half of teens now say that they're online almost constantly. And there are millions of young people in the US who are actually struggling with screen addiction. About half of teenagers currently say that they have nothing to feel proud of, which is pretty depressing. And watching videos and using social media are the most common uses of time. The negative impact on mental health has been just remarkable. Uh, since the iPhone became ubiquitous in 2011, there have been huge increases in loneliness, feelings of worthlessness, depression, self-doubt, uh, suicide, poor social skills. But the interesting thing is that video games are an exception. Video games are addictive and they waste a lot of time, but they don't cause depression. And that's because every video game is a series of goal-oriented challenges, each one a little bit more difficult than the last, which makes them very, very interesting and addictive. And 70% of gamers play socially with somebody else. It's so fascinating to do these goal-oriented challenges that there are 3 billion people in the world who routinely play video games right now, and it's a $347 billion industry. So our solution uh, is basically to use applied positive psychology where we turn real life into a video game. There's an enormous amount of psychology research around goal-oriented challenges. Uh, it's, it's just extraordinary. They are psychologically very special. Success in goal-oriented challenges gives you a sense of autonomy, competence, and relatedness that's very satisfying and addictive. And when you do them with other people, they create closer interpersonal bonds. And when you do them in real life, they give you new skills, uh, exposure to things you've never done before, and a cumulative sense of personal pride and accomplishment, which is actually what we're after. And a fascinating thing is that we do not have to get people to give up their screens entirely to be successful. All we have to do is borrow them periodically. It's gonna be like giving people doses of psychological vitamins. You don't need to take vitamins every day, just enough to keep you from getting sick. In terms of products and services, we're currently building uh, an app and marketplace um, uh, platform that has an extensive challenge database, booking and payment system, there will be user profiles and reviews and also opportunities for community engagement. And the business model is really very simple. So we go to existing businesses, large and small, and say, look, tell you what, would you please create real life challenges based on your expertise? And generally speaking, they all go absolutely delighted to do it. And the challenges are either venue based where, for example, you may have to go to a climbing gym or they could be done at home. And then they offer them on our platform. So examples might be to weld a table, to build an electric skateboard, to sew a backpack. The possibilities are really endless because you can turn almost anything into a goal oriented challenge. We then market them on our website and app. We take a commission on each challenge sold. And then our business partners either host the challenges locally or they handle fulfillment for the autonomous challenges and we pass on their share of the revenue. The market for real life experiences is pretty sizable. Every Eventbrite estimates that events and experiences are about a $102 billion industry in the US. And we think uh, that we should be able to reach a serviceable, obtainable market of about $370 million in five years. That's about 1.5% of the $25 billion addressable market. And because we're an internet-based uh, business, 
we can have, expect very high gross margins, about 80%. And we have really two initial customer segments, as you might imagine, they're the challenge vendors. And then either the people who do the challenges, children's, tweens, early teens, or the people who pay for them, which may be the children, teens, or tweens, but are often parents, guardians, and their families. In terms of competition, our single biggest competitor is clearly screens. Screens are sucking up all the air in the room for virtually everyone in the world who is offering real life uh, experiences. And so that's where, that's where we're putting all of our emphasis is on dealing with screens. The most comparable company to ours, though, is a company called the Adventure Challenge that, that only specializes in mail order goal-oriented challenges. They started four years ago and have gone from zero to $85 million in sales in just four years, just mailing out challenges. I, call, I won't, don't really call them a competitor because we've actually just uh, uh, agreed to carry their challenges on our platform. And there are other competitors for real life experiences. Of course, there, there's meetup.com and TripAdvisor and Lessons and that sort of thing, but they're not goal-oriented challenges. And psychologically and commercially, we think we can differentiate quite nicely from them. In terms of financial projections, we've got two primary revenue streams. The first is commission fees. We earn a percentage-based commission on every challenge that we book. And then premium listings. Vendors can pay for advanced visibility uh, and feature placement on our platform. Our cost structure is the cost structure you'd find for any internet-based business, um, you know, salaries, hosting, that sort of thing. But we do not have to carry inventory. Our financial projections are based on our market research and, and discussions, and we think we should be able to break even by the end of year three after launch, which will be, uh, or launch will be coming later this year. Uh, and by year five, um, we think we should be able to get sales of about $372 million in challenge sales. That would give us a gross revenue of about $63 million and a net revenue of $41 million, again, with 1.5% of the serviceable addressable market. We have an international team I'm very proud of. Um, we have people represented in Europe, in the United States, and in Asia. I'd especially like to point out Dr. Ken Sheldon. Uh, Ken is actually one of the founders of the field of positive psychology when it was founded in the year 2000. He has uh, uh, hundreds uh, of papers um, and thousands of citations for his work. And we're very proud to have him with us as we are proud to have everyone on our team. And that's, uh, that's basically it in a nutshell. Thanks for considering our business plan. We're excited to be for the opportunity to bring this company to life and to make a difference in the lives of children around the, the USA and around the world. I'd be happy to take any questions.